Hello everyone. My name is Krishan Agarwal. Today I'm going to present my AT Tech Talk of data mining and knowledge discovery. And my topic is market-based analysis using a priori and FP growth algorithms. So let's begin. First of all, what is market-based analysis? Market-based analysis is a technique used to discover associations between items in transactional data. Example, if a customer buys bread, they are likely to buy butter too. So this bread and butter are associated each other and are bite and can be calculated. Objectives of this market-based analysis is to enhance business strategies by understanding customers' buying patterns. In digital world, terabytes of commercial data are generated in seconds. And in day-to-day -day activities, huge amount of data are generated. As a result, the volume of data is increasing dramatically. Mining information from these explosive growth of data has become one of the major challenges for data management and mining communities. Moreover, the majority of recognized organizations collect and store massive amounts of customer transaction data. However, having these massive data do not mean the organization had rich commercial information. The business industry need to discover valuable information and knowledge from this vast quantity of data. This leads to market-based basket analysis or we can call it as market-based analysis. The process discovers customers' buying patterns as we discussed like butter and bread by finding association among different items that customer place in their shopping basket. The aim of market ba basket analysis is to determine which item are frequently purchased together by customers. Term frequent item means the item sets which satisfy a user specified predefined percentage value. For example, if a customer purchased milk in a supermarket, then how many greatly possibilities to purchase bread simultaneously with bread? It may be bread or butter or milk or bread. This analysis helps the shop owners to take many important business decisions, identify regular customers, increase product sale, catalog design and many more. The main goal of market basket analysis is to extract association among purchasing products. It also helps retailers to, pro to uh, product the placements on shelves by placing uh, similar products together. For example, if customer who purchase computer also tends to buy antivirus softwares at the same time, then placing the hardware displays close to the software display may help increase the sale of both items. Many algorithms have been proposed for discovering knowledge from these large databases. Mining association rules is one of the most important measurements. An association rule is of the form like X tends to Y, where X referred as some variable and Y refers to some other variable and y tends to z so how this x y and y z are related we'll see more detailly about the algorithms there are many retail applications of market basket analysis like cross selling that is recommending related products like we have discussed inventory management that is optimizing stock based on purchase patterns Next is store layout, where to place, like placing frequently bought together items close to each other, like we discussed about the computer and the softwares, antiviruses and all. Business insights, identifies strong association rules, reveals customer preference and friends. So one of the algorithm for this is a priori algorithm. And what does it do? 
if a item set is frequent, all of its subset must also be frequent. Yes. So what is the process in this algorithm? It will identify frequent item sets using a minimum support threshold, generate association rule, that is using minimum confidence threshold by identifying the item sets and finding out the association between the products. So here we have used the terms support, that is frequency of an item set appearing in a transaction, confidence, likelihood of item being bought together. It will find the confidence of each association and also lift. Lift is a ratio of observed support to expected support of the item if it was independent. There are certain steps involved in this algorithm. First step is to generate candidate item set of length k from the item set of length k minus 1. Next is to calculate support for each candidate item set. Prune item sets that do not meet the minimum support threshold. All the item sets which are not associating with the item set, we are going to prune them. That means we are going to remove them. Next is repeat until no new candidate sets are generated. Generate association rules from frequent item set. So these were the steps involved in this a priori algorithm. Next algorithm is our FP growth algorithm. What is the FP growth algorithm? It constructs a compact data structure called as FP tree, representing frequent patterns. That means it is a frequent pattern tree. So what is the process? Building a FP tree and then mine frequent patterns from it. So create a tree data structure to represent the transactions and then extract frequent item sets from that tree. Advantages. It avoids costly candidate generation like we have seen in the previous algorithm. More efficient and scalable than a priori for large data sets. So what are the steps involved in this algorithm? We are going to scan the data set to determine the support of each item. Next, sort that items in descending order of their support. We have discussed support already. Next, we are going to build the FP tree, frequent pattern tree, and then inserting the transactions into the tree. Create paths and update counts, and then extract frequent patterns from the FP tree using the recursive approach. These were the two algorithms used in business basket analysis. Now, comparing both the algorithms, a priori algorithm and FP growth algorithm. A priori algorithm is simple to understand and implement, but inefficient for large data sets due to excessive candidate generation. Whereas FP growth algorithm is faster and more memory efficient, handles large data set well, but more complex implementation. And it is complex to understand. Use cases. A priori is used for small to medium sized data sets, whereas FP data set can be FP growth algorithm can be used for small to medium also, but generally due to its complexity, it is used in large data sets. So let us do a case study retail data analysis uh, data sets transaction from a supermarket example groceries data set. We are going to collect data set from the supermarket of groceries. So what are the objective? Identify frequently bought together items to improve product placement and promotions. So what tools we are going to use? Python libraries. So to implement this algorithm, we are using Python libraries such as MLextend for a priori and PYFP growth for FP growth algorithm. How to implement the steps which we have seen for both the algorithms are same. So general step is to load and process pre-process the data sets and then apply these algorithms using the libraries in the language. I am using here Python and then extract and analysis 
analyze the frequent item set and association rule if it is a priori and frequent item set if it is FP algorithm. So after implementation, for example, if we take bread, butter, milk, cookies, these are the frequent item sets, association rules. That is, if bread, then butter, support value, 0 0.2 and confidence, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 shows that they are bought very frequently together. Rule, if milk, then cookies, support 0 0.15, confidence 0 0.7. This support and confidence denotes the probability of buying milk and cookies together or the item sets together. High confidence rules indicate strong association and useful for targeted marketing and promotional strategies. What are the challenges and considerations? First of all, data quality. Importance of clean, accurate, and complete data is required. That means the data set should be accurate and handling missing and inconsistent data should be done before applying the algorithms. Parameters tuning, that is choosing appropriate support and confidence thresholds and balancing between too many and too few rules while in the FP3. Scalability, efficiently processing large data sets, optimizing algorithm for performance. Like if we have a short or what we can say, a uh, medium sized data set, we need not to use FP algorithm, which is complex to implement and understand. You can use the a priori algorithm, which is efficient over there for the small data sets. Conclusion, MBA market-based analysis using a priori and FP growth provides valuable insights into customer behavior. Each algorithm has its strengths and suitable applications as we, as we have discussed. So what can we done other than these two algorithms? Incorporating temporal patterns for time-based analysis, leveraging machine learning for predictive analysis, integrating with real-time data for dynamic analysis. So this can be done to improve these algorithm performance more. Thank you.